Ford reliability. Let's talk about that. We've got some great information in regards to Ford reliability. We're going to be talking about Ford reliability on various models. First of all, let's start with the Super Duty. The Super Duty, made in America, made by Americans, 9,000 workers in the plant that makes the Super Duty. So let's hope Ford continues. I, I hope and I pray that Ford will continue to make their high profit vehicles in the US and in Canada. We need these jobs. We're building them right, it looks like, because this is a top vehicle for reliability. And so is the Ford Ranger, the Ford Edge, even though it's going away. If you find a, a used Ford Edge year after year, it is a, in a top spot when it comes to reliability. And what other vehicles? Well, the Ford Ranger was ranked third in 2024 vehicle dependability study. So the new Ranger uh, is, you know, they're perceiving that it will actually be reliable and use, usually GD powers, they get it right at first. Overall, their, their percentage of right versus wrong, they're generally getting it correct. Uh, when they go on three-year-old Rangers, interestingly enough, on, you know, on the 2023 JD Power US initial, initial quality study, um, they found that you know, the Ranger would be reliable. You go back to 2020 when, it, when the vehicle's three years old, also reliable. So they usually get this right. So let's cover this. Let's see if it's Brett Foote that, yes, Brett Foot yet again, writing great articles for us to catch up on when it comes to Ford authority. So he was talking about how the previous generation Ford Ranger that it has, it's on the list of the most reliable used vehicles and most reliable three-year-old models. After which the Ranger secured the top spot in its segment on the 2023 JD Power US initial quality study. So very interesting. Ford Super Duties made it up at the top of the heavy duty truck segment as well. Now the Ford Ranger did rank third in the midsize pickup segment, falling behind two of its rivals, the Tacoma and the Colorado. But it's worth pointing out that uh, these were for the 2020 model year, which is not notable given the fact that the Colorado was redesigned in 2023. So the Colorado had been around for quite a while. Uh, and the Ranger and Tacoma are also all new for 2024. And the 2024 JD Power US Vehicle Dependability Study is based on the responses of 30,595 owners. So I do like JD Power's, any, any, any company that looks at a ton of people, I'd say that's worth looking at. Uh, when they only look at, let's say, 100 or 1,000, if they only interview 100, uh, review 100 people, 100 owners, I don't consider that to be a good study. So the VDS study does focus on 180 for specific problems across areas covering nine categories such as climate, driving assistance, driving experience, exterior, Features, controls, displays, infotainment, interior, powertrain, and seats. Uh, and he just goes on. You can read the article, but he just goes on to say that JD's Power's initial quality reliability study and when they cover the, those vehicles once they're three years old, when they're covering at roughly 30,000 owners, that they do, they're pretty spot on. So you can follow that study. Now, oddly, sometimes... You know, things move around a lot. You look back to 2019 U.S. initial quality study, and I'll read them to you here. You had Genesis as number one, Kia, number two, Hyundai, number three, and four, Ford in number four. And now Ford is way down the list. But I'm not a huge fan of the initial quality study, actually, to be fair with you. The IQS initial quality study, IQS, because they ask owners sort of a general question. It's kind of like other than going for an oil change within your first year, did you have to go to the dealer for other reasons? And most of what gets you either at the top of this list or at the bottom of this list, like, such as this year, Tesla being way, way, way at the bottom of this list and Ford being pretty far down too, a lot of it has to do with issues with technology. And sometimes that's part of the 18 inch 
problem. And by the 18 inch problem, I mean the 18 inches between the steering wheel and roughly the headrest. <laughs> so the driver, a lot of those issues are with the driver. I can say on a daily, as an insider, I'll tell you on a daily basis, we have people coming in, some of them end up at service, in which case it would count as a visit to service beyond just an oil change because their cell phone Bluetooth is off, but they blame the vehicle. So it gets reported in the system that there is an issue that has occurred other than an oil change. And that can affect, that does affect your initial quality study. So it's not just looking at, there's no waiting, you know, a blown engine somehow is worth the same as someone whose phone has disconnected from the vehicle and you've got now a technology problem. Well, it's often an 18 inch problem that 18 inches occurring between the steering wheel and the headrest. So I think we need time. Truly my opinion is you do need time to figure out who's reliable and who's not reliable. But let's talk about someone who definitely is reliable, a model I think many of us can love and respect uh, unless you're really getting worked up uh, thinking everything has to be electric. Uh, of course, we've got the Bronco that everyone loves and respects. I'm not talking about reliability in this one, mind you. Scotty Kilmer did try to trash the Bronco as if it's some unreliable vehicle. And, you know, his reasoning was because of all those blown engines. Come on, folks. We all know that there's very few 2.7 liter V6 engines blown. That they did blow because of some bad pieces that were put into the engine for a small period of time and that that was worked out so it's a fantastic vehicle this is my third i think i might end up keeping this and actually paying off the loan over time uh, because i've thrown on a wrap i usually i don't once i start modifying a vehicle i end up keeping it but it's got a front clear wrap I've put many coats of ceramic coat on it myself, so lots of time invested. I've got the handles. I've got the blow-off valve in the front. I've had the front hood repainted. And that's, you know, an important point. An important point to reliability is I'm okay with recalls. Recalls means the manufacturer is offering to pay for something so you don't have to pay for it. So I really like how Ford was really great. They just, there's a little, little spot on the hood for whatever reason during the paint process, the spot on the hood didn't get covered, whole hood got repainted. My back hinges in the back of the vehicle. Two of the hinges that hold the door. So I had a spot here, I'm not sure if you see the mouse cursor, but it was right around here, a tiny little spot, but slowly rust would have formed there. Got the whole new hood painted. They threw me on this new wild track sticker on the back. Two hinges got repainted, all under warranty, didn't cost me a thing. And this back window, the, this is the changed piece. Ford gave me a brand new window because this was starting to curl up. So more important re than reliability, because no one makes a perfect product, more important than reliability is a manufacturer being responsible giving good customer service. And the customer service I've gotten on this Bronco has been incredible. A little flap was lifting up here. So a thief could, you know, put in their finger, not even, don't even need a screwdriver, just their finger and pull. And it would take this window off. And then they had access, you know, into the things in the back of this vehicle, in the back of this beautiful Bronco. Ford covered that. No issues at all. Didn't have to fight with for them. Uh, I've wrapped the front blow off adapter so it's sounding sweet <laughs> can't get that on a v8 unless it's got a turbo but the v8s with turbos pretty rare i'm running no key and tires so i'll cover all that please like and subscribe hit the bell notifications so you don't miss out on our bronco videos coming up we'll be talking about the problems we've had with our broncos the solutions and we'll talk we'll show you how a baby seat fits in this how a stroller fits in the back trunk so we'll have a nice little nine minute video nine ten minute video on all that but i want to cover i think an incredible story right here in regards to ford reliability two hundred and ten thousand mile 2008 Ford Mustang Shelby GT500 is still rocking it. So you've got this over at Ford Authority. And look at that beauty. That's a ton of mileage, folks. And superchargers and turbos, call me crazy, but they put an added strain. And really quite the added strain on vehicles. And this vehicle with its supercharger 
has survived 210,000 miles. It's easy to make Toyota, you know, Toyota, for example. Many Toyotas have really great reliability. Reliability. And the engines last a really long time. But most Toyotas are boring and have comparatively very little power. It's easy to make an engine that can handle, let's say, 400 horsepower, but then if you only give it 280 horsepower, yes, it's going to be a very long-lasting engine. You over-engineered it. Just like how Porsche 911 from 1999 to 2005 under-engineered their IMS bearing because, well, on certain models, up to, uh, up to roughly 10% of IMS bearings fail, the engine blows and you have a $25,000 repair that Porsche has never accepted responsibility for. There's no recall. There's no coverage. So that horrible customer service means I'd say those 911s are potentially hot garbage. But if for, you know, Porsche would account, come along and said, you know what, if it happens to you, we'll take care of your engine. Or, you know, here's a, a recall, bring them into the dealer, we'll check your IMS bearing, we'll check for bore scoring, you know, once every, whatever, two years, we'll check for our customers, and if we see bore, bore scoring, we'll change out your IMS bearing, or just recall the whole IMS bearing. They went from an IMS bearing that had roughly 1% failure rate in 1999, and they're like, well, this isn't good enough. Let's put in a different IMS bearing, and the IMS bearing that they had from 2000 to 2005 has roughly what's estimated to be 10% or a little over 10% failure rate, causing a blown engine in $25,000. So the real issue here is bad customer service. Hyundai have made some horrible engines that, you know, they've made uh, one or two horrible four cylinders that blow up a lot. But at least they have given, you know, kind of a lifetime warranty on it, which you have to fight really hard. I have a customer, a client, a guy I know, at almost 300,000 kilometers, got his new engine in the vehicle. And he said it was very, very difficult. It took a very long period of time, lots of fighting, but at least he it was possible and he did get a new engine. So when it comes to reliability, folks, it's not just about reliability studies. It's also about customer service, how you get treated, and what manufacturers are willing to admit. And Ford is great at, they're basically running after problems, offering to change them. And journalists, not always being the best of people, journalists and politicians seem to more and more go, be, you know, walking down the beach hand in hand together, helping each other out. More and more, those the journalists and politicians are working together. And originally, the, the media, part of the Constitution, the media was seen as a counterbalance as a protection against those incredibly powerful political parties. So when you get political parties owning, owning, completely owning the media, you've got a major problem. Even when you go take it down, not just about big, huge politics, even when you take it down to local politics, you know, lo, you could say local business interactions. Marie, who's not here this evening, she's taking care of our daughter, but she had a friend who was on a road test at a dealer. And this dealer, this dealership is, you know, many dealerships under one name. And they were a passenger and they told the salesperson, slow down. No, seriously, he said, seriously, you're scaring me. Please so slow down. And he asked the salesman who was driving to slow down several times and the vehicle ended up rolling over and having an accident. He, this individual was trying to become a, a gym teacher. And well, it made it so that he couldn't follow his education for a while. It gave him a lot of hardships. And here you had this big, you know, big network dealer threatening this individual saying, you know, <laughs> you're the one who owes us. It's your fault that the accident happened. And then because the local media had a lot of advertising dollars coming in from all those dealerships under one owner, guess what happened? That first wanted to run the story. They were going to run the story. And then an editor stepped in and said, we can't run that story. They're a major source of revenue for us. So that's just a very small local example of how media 
and politics or even big business, media needs to be independent. The best media is independent media. We can't get censored and get told, you know, if you talk about, you know, whether, whatever it may be, whether it's a political issue, a health issue, starting with a C, we can't be live, we can't allow ourselves to live in a society where you just talk about a topic and your way of life, you know, you get shut down on the medias and maybe, you know, in the, our case, we have a business from this, we just completely get shut down. So, uh, yeah, and Peugeot mentioning that in 1999, Mazda had a bunch of bad engines, so No Hassle swapped his 99 Miata motor with No Hassle in under a week. Yeah, that's what's important. No one, and Mazda is relatively very reliable. I find Mazda and Toyota uh, reliability to be similar, but Mazda being far more exciting than the Toyota product, despite having a Toyota MR2 in my garage. That was a different generation. But it's all about service. So M. Peugeot, thank you for giving uh, that excellent example. So folks, I'm wrapping this up and saying that reliability is more about service and responsibility. They should have, instead of reliability studies, they should have responsibility studies.